Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, let's write our first program that prints hello world using Apex. But before we get to that, let's first try to understand how we write and execute a Java program. But why Java? Because Apex is quite similar to Java. In the previous video, we had installed a number of softwares in order to set up our development environment for Salesforce, where we installed JDK as well. JDK or Java Development Kit contains all the utilities to develop and execute a Java program. In case you have not watched the previous part, I highly recommend you to check that out so that you can understand this video better. Find the link in the description. I have created a simple hello world program in Java. Let's see how we can compile and run the same in our local machine. We launch the command prompt Navigate to the folder using change directory command. Compile the Java file so that we get dot class file generated and then run the class file using Java command. Now here comes the part where Apex differs from Java. Although you can write and store Apex code locally, but you can't really execute it on your local machine. That is because Apex is executed in Salesforce server. Simply put, we need a Salesforce org to execute our Apex code. Now the question is, what is a Salesforce org? You may go through the definition on your screen right now or simply for the time being, think of it as your own personal space to experiment in the Salesforce server. If you observe this diagram, you should be able to understand that the Apex program that we write in VS Code would need to be sent to Salesforce org in the cloud so that it can be run. For that, we would need to set up a connection between the IDE and our development org. More on this later in the video. Let's see what we have to do and in what order. Step one is to sign up for the Salesforce development edition so that we have an org to work with. We need to navigate to this URL developer.salesforce.com slash sign up. As the instructions on the web page suggest, filling up this form would get you a full featured copy of the Salesforce sales cloud that you can use to experiment and learn more about Salesforce. Just go ahead and fill up the required details. Make sure to enter a valid email ID because we would get a verification link on the same. You can enter the same username as your email ID but this needs to be unique in Salesforce. Wait for the email to arrive after submitting the form. This may take a while so I would skip this part. 
When you receive the email, make a note of your login URL and username. Then click on the verify account button and this would take you to a page where you would need to set up your login password and a recovery question. Click on change password after filling in the details and you are done. You are redirected straight to the Salesforce setup page. Let's quickly move to our VS code where we created a Salesforce project in the last video. Again, link to that video is in the description down below. Do Check that out if you haven't already. When we created the project, this was the folder structure created by Salesforce CLI. You can also check these folders from the local file explorer. The structure should be identical as you see in VS Code. Notice there is no Apex class as of now. Also, if we go back to VS Code, we can see in the bottom left that it says no default org set. Which basically means that your project is not linked to any Salesforce org at the moment. This is the part where we would set up that connection we have shown in the previous slide. So let's go ahead and click this status. It shows a list of CLI commands, also known as the command palette. Click on the first command from the list that is SFDX, authorize an org. Select project default and enter an alias name for this org connection and hit enter. The CLI would run this command and open the browser for you to log into Salesforce org. Enter the username and password of your recently created development org and hit login. Upon successful login, the Salesforce CLI would ask you these permissions. You would need to allow access and we have successfully set up the connection. You can verify what happened by inspecting the output tab here. Also, if you check the same spot, you would see that now we have a connected org showing up. Now let's get to the fun part of writing the code. From the explorer on the left, locate the folder that says classes and right click on that. You would get a number of SFDX commands listed. Click on the create apex class. Give it a desired name and hit enter. This would give you a piece of code similar to that of a class with constructor in Java. So all we have to do here is to add a public and static method that would print hello world for us. Another noteworthy point is as we print onto the console using the system.out.print in Java, here in Apex, we print onto the debug log using system.debug. You can now see two files created inside the classes folder. But at this point of time, this class is not present inside our Salesforce org. And this is how you check that. 
Go to the setup home in your org and search for Apex classes. This would show you all the Apex classes that you have created in your org and as of now we have none. For the same reason we are not in a position to execute the class method now. So let's go ahead and push this piece of code to our org. All we have to do is select the entire class folder from the explorer section in VS Code, right click on it and from the given options, click on SFDX Deploy Source to Org. Once the deployment is successful in VS Code, we can go back to our org and refresh the page. And we should be able to see the Hello World class created. All we are now left with is to execute the code that we have written. This step is going to be analogous to the one where we compiled and run the Java file in our local system. I suppose by now you must have figured out that in order to do anything with the salesforce org, we have to make use of the salesforce cli commands. And this is going to be no different. But before getting into that, we must understand how any piece of code is run by the execution engine. As you saw in the case of Java, we had a Java class file which contained the entry point to the program. That is the main method. To execute the main method, we had given a command java space name of the class that had the main method. Similarly, in Salesforce, the point of entry to manually execute a public method of a class we use something called as an execute anonymous, which is basically a piece of code that lets you invoke public methods of a class. In the explorer on the left, find a folder that says scripts. Inside that folder, there should be a subfolder named apex. Locate the hello.apex file and open it. Remove the existing content of the file and invoke the public method of our class. Now all we have to do is select the line of code that we want to execute anonymously and do control shift p. This will open the cli command palette. From this, we need to select the command execute anonymous apex with currently selected text. Once the command is run successfully, you can check the output in the output tab. As you can see, it has printed the hello world message. Let's make some changes and make the hello world in bold so that it's easier to find out between the debug logs. We deploy the changes and let's run this again. And this is what we have got. Alright, that's all for today's video. If you find this video helpful, do support my work by subscribing to the channel and like this video. See you in the next one.